Region 11 advisor and past District 20 director. She is a corporate and personal development trainer by profession. Help me welcome the founding charter president of the Athena International Coastmaster Club, none other than DTM Vicky Ferrer. Thank you to our Zoom master, Gilda Schla. This is such a wonderful event and I'm really, really excited about the women in tech. It's, it's really rare that we would find five outstanding women who will be part of the panel tonight or this morning, wherever, whichever part of the world you are. I'd like to acknowledge our other Zoom master, Toastmaster Imtiaz Aslam from India, Hyderabad. He's an electrical engineer working for ABB as a senior specialist for earthing and lightning protection system. Welcome, and he's there to make sure that there are no noise disturbances and, and all that other things that could distract us. Meanwhile, a woman in tech serves she thinks not only of what a career in tech can do for her, but what skills she can use to make an impact on her community, country, and world. Once she finds what her passion is, a woman in tech thinks about what she can do to make it better for others. And I believe in women supporting women. I was in awe of these two young men. Men supporting women, isn't that wonderful? When they invited me to join them and organize this event, I accepted it immediately. And it is my pleasure to introduce the two men behind this event. Edgar Regalado is a software engineer from El Salvador, currently based in Prague and striving to become a businessman. Federico Navarrete is an IT innovator and author focused on creating a better world with technology. He is originally also from El Salvador and he has lived in Poland and in Spain. Dear fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, Help me welcome these two men supporting women. The virtual screen is yours, Federico and Edgar. Thank you very much, Vicky. And welcome back to Cyber Prophets. This is a great opportunity where we prophesize the future of technology. In this place, we would like to know more about women working in the tech sector or even studying or sharing how they got into this area. But before going in depth, I would like to ask Kuhn, who can tell us more about the timing rules, because he's our expert who will collaborate with us. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the word. I'll be brief, because the timer just is here to show the, when the minimum time is reached, because every time a topic is given to a speaker, it's the idea to speak within one to two minutes and to finish up after red has been reached or the two minute limit. So I will give the, the green, the amber, and the red uh, cards when uh, those times have been reached. So green after one, one minute, amber after one and a half, and red after two minutes. It is possible that uh, a, a timer might have to replace me, but I'm sure uh, Edgar or Federico will inform you from, from that moment who to pin then. Okay, have a good meeting, enjoy tonight. Thank you very much, Kuhn. And just to highlight who will be our backup timer, his name is Santiago, he's somewhere else. He's a good friend of mine from Spain and he's collaborating with us. So yeah, we already had that one oh. already installed. Thank you very much, Kuhn, for bringing us your support. But now it's time to bring to the people that are making this night something interesting. And I would like that they introduce themselves and give us some of the hints of how they get it started, how everything is started in their careers, or hey, why they joined to the tech sector. And let's start by Jessica. 
Hi, everybody. Thank you again, Federico and Edgar, for setting this up. I'm really excited to be here. Um, this is my first time doing something this big, right? Very international. I'm actually located in the United States. I'm currently in Denver, Colorado. Um, I studied aerospace engineering um, in Florida. So I did my career there. And then I knew I wanted to do um, into like the aeronautics or the space sector. And so I actually was able to get a job with Lockheed Martin Aeronautics out in Texas. And so out there, I spent two years. I worked with uh, military fighter jets, so F-16s, F-22s. Really enjoyed my time there. And then after working there for two years, I got an itch that I really wanted to do space. And so thankfully, the company that I work for um, actually offers opportunities also in the space sector. And so that's what motivated me to move out here to Colorado, where I'm currently in the space sector. Um, and so I guess one thing that I would say is sometimes it's like your first job doesn't mean it's you know, your passion, right? It's, or like, um, it's like your dream job, right? And so sometimes it might take time. Sometimes it might take various learning opportunities, various moments to um, take new job opportunities, um, new growth opportunities to help um, direct you in the direction that you would like to go. And so that's what's happening to me. So I kind of did the aeronautic side. I enjoyed it, but I saw that that's just not the direction I wanted to stay in. And so now I moved into the space sector and the current job that I that I'm in, it's what I like, but I, I still want to keep learning and, and doing other things. And so um, that's currently where I am at right now. So thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica. Now let's go to Sabina. Hello, I'm Sabina here. I'm from Doha, Qatar. I, I'm originally from India. Uh, as you know, I am a professional postgraduate in Master of Technology in Computer Science and Engineering uh, with 15 plus years of experience in information technology. I started my career as a network engineer in the IT city of India called Bangalore. Then I worked for a multinational company as a uh, system administrator and network engineer and a programmer. Then I also worked uh, as a lecturer in computer science in an engineering college in India. Then I moved to Qatar after my marriage and I started in a project Museum of Islamic Art as the IT support engineer. Then uh, I, I got a wonderful opportunity to work with the world famous architects and engineers there because that project was one of the dream projects of Qatar government, uh, enhancing the tourism, especially the field of museums. And I got hired directly to the headquarters, uh, headquarters Qatar, uh, QMA, Qatar Museums Authority in the IT department as an IT engineer. And also I served uh, after that uh, uh, as an IT engineer in Aspire Zone, then I moved to an American uh, organization uh, and I worked there as IT manager for around uh, eight and a half years. Now presently working as an IT leader and project manager for a multinational company dealing with cloud-based uh, softwares. It's located uh, in the, the rich city Luzail near Qatara Hospitality in Qatar because Qatar is uh, looking forward uh, 2022 World Cup and a lot of project, 2030 Qatar National Visions. Um, as you know, I'm very active in uh, Toastmasters. It's a passion for me more than, uh, you know, I'm doing something. It's like, I'm very enjoyable for me to meet people. Um, uh, Jessica, I have to say, I came to Denver last uh, to, to 2019 during the last annual conference with uh, my mentors of Toastmasters, Rajesh Raghav, and we came as a fam together as a family and enjoyed around 10, nine days there. Yeah. And I like the place very much. Uh, yeah. Then, um, uh, Toastmasters, currently I'm serving as division E director. Um, we are on top uh, in district one, 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 even though we have uh, seven divisions, division E is on top with the presently chartered five new clubs. Athena International Toastmasters is our uh, baby club. Uh, Vicky Ferrar, she, uh, she and uh, her team put a lot of effort to bring this woman only online international Toastmasters club. I'm thoroughly enjoying being a member in Athena under the guidance of Vicky. And uh, I, I was thinking like, why it's so late that I met uh, Vicky this close. Every day we are texting and she's guiding me everything. Like, uh, like a friend, I would say, I don't even feel that uh, uh, age difference between uh, 
in China, yes, right? <laughs> so uh, other than that, I'm a uh, president of Institution of Engineers India, and I will continue later, later on explaining more about me, you will know. Thank you once again, over to you. Thank you very much, Savina. Now let's go to Gosha. Hello everyone, uh, I'm very happy that I have a chance to be here uh, with so many people from so many different countries. Uh, I'm, I come from Poland and this is where I currently am. Uh, and as you can see, my name is Gosia, but from LinkedIn you may remember Małgorzata, this is my full name. Uh, it's quite uh, a bit more difficult than Gosia. <laughs> Uh, I work in IT for um, more than four years right now, and I started my career uh, by accident. Uh, I came to a company that was a software house, uh, and I got an opportunity uh, to work as an office manager. And back then I was still studying uh, on the second year of my uh, of my studies, and I had no idea what I want to do. Uh, I just knew that I want to do something that I love and that will be my passion, but I wasn't sure what it is yet back then. And uh, it turned out that I fell in love with uh, projects. I fell in love with digital produ products uh, and I loved working with teams. Uh, and I started learning by myself how to become a project manager, uh, an agile project manager, and diving deeper into building products and helping clients, startups, and also international companies build products that answer the needs of their customers. And this is what I currently do. So people come to me and I help them define um, their products, what they want to build, and I help put their vision um, into business uh, business world and requirements and user uh, value basically so this is this is what i do on a daily basis uh, and um, in basically in it i work uh, also with uh, mentoring programs so i act as mentor uh, for women that are starting their journey in it uh, in poland currently we have a lot of programs that are helping women start in their journey in IT. Thanks so much uh, for being here and let's have a great meeting. Back to you, Federico. Thank you very much, Gosha. Ms. Rin. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for the organizer, organizers of this uh, panel. It's really my pleasure and honor to be among uh, you two tonight. I'm Israel Khatib, I'm from Lebanon. Uh, by profession, I'm a computer engineer. Uh, I chose this uh, profession uh, at the beginning because I wanted uh, a domain that's dynamic, that not something uh, that, is, uh, that can become monotonous or without uh, news every day. And that's why I went into computer engineering. Uh, with time and with uh, new requirements and uh, new developments, I moved into information security and uh, cybersecurity, business continuity, and risk management. Basically, my 20 years of experience is mainly in the financial sector here in Lebanon. And uh, in addition to my work as a professional in these domains, uh, I'm very active in the NGO, in the NGOs. Uh, so I started with Toastmasters uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, actually, my experience in Toastmasters helped me to go and explore other opportunities where I can combine uh, my experience to more productive ways. So I joined as well another NGO, which is ISACA. It's an international organization with local chapter here for information security and audit professionals. And I became the local chapter president, as well as I started to be the ISACA has the initiative international uh, international initiative for women in inclusion she leads tech so i'm their uh, liaison and uh, ambassador here in lebanon also i'm an active member in women in cyber security middle east uh, i try as much as possible to combine my experience in uh, technology as well as my uh, uh, activities uh, to more to empower more people and to encourage more especially women to join and uh, work more in the, in the technology and cyber uh, security domain mainly and uh, as well i'd like to turn my uh, 
both experience into the domain that I like, which is more into educating people uh, and raising cyber awareness among people, whoever is online. And I believe this is my mission for the upcoming uh, years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nisreen. And finally, Kasha. Hello, everyone. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you so much, Federico and Edgar, for organizing it. My name is Katarzyna Wojdalska, and as Gosia, I come from Poland, where I did my bachelor's in nanotechnology. Currently, I'm studying my master's program in Finland, and the master's program is called Functional Materials. I also have a minor in design thinking. I did a few internships, and I also studied in a few universities abroad, and I am really passionate about innovation. So, for example, one of my favorite projects that I used to work in the past was 3D printing of pre-surgical organs. Currently, I am uh, working on my thesis. It's going to be about wearable strain and pressure sensors. And I'm also working on a publication that is about mechanochromic materials. So basically color changing um, materials upon applying of a strain. And soon I will look for my first real job. Also, in my free time, I am a member of Robot Uprising, which is a story-driven hackathon in Finland and also the biggest story-driven hackathon in the whole Europe. And I am also a part of uh, Women for Women workshops in Finland, so I'm really glad that I could uh, apply also uh, my passion for helping women in here and, uh, and help them uh, in a similar situation. Yeah, let's hope that we'll have a great time here and that you will learn a lot from us all. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies, for sharing your experience with us and actually for deciding to participate in this panel. I'm pretty sure that all of us can learn something from your experience. And just a small reminder, please, you can write all of your questions to the chat and we'll have a Q&A session at the end of this panel, okay? To move forward with the next question, we'll be interested in knowing what influence does the culture have on each of your experience and for that we have selected uh, three of you who have different backgrounds come from different societies and we would like to know if first of all the reasons why you decided to get involved in technology and second if whether you had the support of your family and whether it is like supported by the society to join this kind of field so uh, as I was telling you, it, it will be like from three different societies. And I will start by asking Jessica, can you please tell us how was your experience if you had the support of your family and why you decided to get involved in this field? Yeah, thank you, Edgar, for that question. So that, that's actually a really good question, you know, for women. And um, I actually come from a Hispanic background. So my uh, family's from Colombia. Um, they're immigrants here in the United States, you know, they raised my brothers and I, you know, here in the American culture and all that. So I was born and raised in Miami, but, you know, with those roots um, and and thankfully, I really had the full support of my parents um, at the beginning um, when I decided that I wanted to do aerospace engineering. Right. It's um, at the time it was still very like male dominated, you know, that 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 thinking process. And so I do know that my mom at the beginning, she did have her res reservations, right? Um, kind of like, oh, can you build, a, can you still have a family with that career? Like that sort of question. But thankfully, like she really saw that, like I was really passionate about that. Like I really wanted to do it. Um, and thankfully here in Florida, we have the Kennedy Space Center, right? So we have a lot of um, NASA launches there, you know, the space shuttle, like all that stuff. And that's really what I like. As you can see in the background, you know, I, I really like space. And so Thankfully, my parents, uh, when I was younger, that's where they took me. Um, and that's actually um, where I got that, um, that drive, right? Seeing all these women accomplishing, like, you know, these goals that are literally out of this world, right? And so in that point, like, that's when I kind of decided I wanted to do it. You know, I really liked math. So that kind of, you know, directed me in that direction. Um, and then my parents seeing that I really was passionate about that, I really liked it, like, I wanted to learn all about that. They were totally on board. So um, I'm one of the lucky ones, I think, that I really got the full support of my parents, my brothers as well. Um, and so thankfully I didn't have to, um, you know, kind of like feel guilty or feel bad about, you know, doing this career. And so um, they're really proud of me. And, um, so I'm really thankful that, you know, they're, they're very supportive. So yeah, great question. Thank you. 
that is pretty good to know that you got the full support and you're right, these goals are literally out of this world. Now, uh, I would like to know what is the situation in India. Sabina, can you please tell us uh, how was it for you? Did you have the support of your family when you decided to, to start your career in technology? Uh, thank you, Edgar, for that question. Uh, actually started my career in computers because of my passion, because I, I had a lot of cousins, elder brothers working in the same field, engineering, computer science, electronics, and a lot of uh, my se uh, senior cousins, they are working in Microsoft and other software development companies in India. So fortunately, I'm very fortunate, actually got support from my parents, even grandparents, other family members, most of my family members, I don't know what is the reason, they all are engineers. <laughs> so uh, it was quite, uh, it was not a challenging for me in the very beginning. It was like something I'm doing naturally, what I'm supposed to do in the very beginning. But as I started career in India, I realized it's not that uh, the, the same way that I thought while I was studying in university. There's small change like uh, timing difference, the way, you know, the industrial, uh, differences but still uh, for me uh, I, it was enjoyable uh, and I wanted to learn more and more you know during the bachelors of technology we learn only softwares or you know few concepts only after I wanted to learn more about the networking concept hardware concept so I was decided to pursue more and more towards the master degree and even some other certifications so I realized myself more than achieving a career, my initial um, uh, journey towards this was a passion to learn more about computers, how really they are working. So that made me, uh, I think, solid in that field than achieving a cook, uh, quickly achieving a career. So for me, yes, I got support from my family, even my uh, elder cousin, I remember, he's sitting near to me, he's sitting near to me to helping uh, in the coding. Coding, I never know what is a coding. The first time, I the, he's the one who taught me the first codes. So they were very easily coding some program and I realized it is something very easy for me too. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Edgar, for that question. Thank you for your answer, Sabina. And surely coming from a family of engineers really helps also. And last, I would like to know how is it in Poland. So maybe let me ask Gosha, what was your experience when entering the field? Basically, when it comes to support, I had all the support that I needed uh, from my whole family. Uh, I always knew that I can do whatever I want, uh, which is, I think, the best possible support. Um, however, I think that it was uh, still quite um, challenging because even though I had support, um, the field that I got into was quite innovative uh, for most of my family members. And it was very hard to explain what am I doing and what am I really working on. Uh, so that was that was the only obstacle, I think. Uh, but when it comes to uh, why I got into the technology, as I said, it was a bit by accident, but it was mostly, but it was in the end, why I stayed, I think is more important. I stayed because I found something that is, first of all, challenging for me. And secondly, that is something that I really like and that I enjoy doing. And when I first started working at a software house, as an office manager, I had no idea that I will stay and make a career uh, in IT. And back then, I thought of myself as a completely a technical person, someone that cannot be an uh, engineer or uh, have anything to do with computers. And while I'm still not coding or uh, I'm not an engineer per se, but I, I work in IT and I understand more um, that most people probably uh, because I work with uh, digital products and I help them build help build them um, and I think uh, what got what let me also stay is that the field is really dynamic and you can have so many opportunities and you can never stop learning there is always something new showing up and coming and this is what makes it extremely exciting fascinating and like makes you uh, constantly curious about anything that is happening. So I think that this is what made me uh, stay in the end. Thanks. 
Thank you very much. I believe that all the all those folks that you have shared are something unique. I wouldn't say that many people have had the support of their families or even how they move forward in that in those areas. And now I would like to know more about the perception that you have about the women in the technology sector. And I would like to start with Nisreen. Hi again. Well, uh, when I started, uh, it wasn't uh, very common or uh, we used to be minorities uh, being in the technology and even in the security. So many times, uh, for example, in small conferences, I would be the only lady or in meetings, I would be the only girl there. Um, but th things uh, are changing uh, and we can see, we see more women are coming into this domain, whether in technology, whether in security, uh, whether in any related uh, the, uh, the um, uh, ICT domains. Uh, I believe that uh, things are becoming more promising uh, in that, uh, in that uh, from that perspective, and people are more expecting and uh, accepting the fact that. Uh, Girls can be coders, girl, girls can be programmers, girls can be the network engineers, the security engineers, the uh, those who will be configuring the router, uh, maybe staying uh, all night to fix that uh, error on the server. So things are becoming more promising and uh, more accepting and more uh, inclusive for women. Of course, uh, Lots of work is still to be done. Uh, more encouragement is still to be done. Uh, more mentorship maybe uh, for both men and women, men to accept and to help and women to, to go forward and uh, be encouraged to be in that domain. But I believe the domain now is more accepting and more welcoming to women. Thank you very much, Ms. Kasha. This is actually a very tough question. I was thinking when Nisreen was saying uh, everything about women in technology and what do I think about them? And the first thing that popped into my mind was that they are actually extremely brave, extremely brave, because there are still many dark stereotypes about technology and the IT se sector. It's really just overtaken by men. So a lot of young girls are quite afraid of starting their career in technology. Technology. So I'll just say it's about brave. It's nothing new that there are less uh, women in this sector. And I think that sometimes they must think outside of the box because when I was young, when I was in high school, we didn't have any workshops that were showing us how, for example, 3D print something or how to code something that would work, how to use Arduino and so on and so on. So they also must be quite driven to learn about this word by themselves and not only to wait for the opportunities just to come because of course i attended some events for women in technology when i was younger to uh, they were meant for for high schoolers to just encourage them to start uh, studying something that was related to technology but it's not enough it's not enough so yes in one word brave Thank you very much for sharing your perceptions. And now I would like to know more specifically about um, some industries. We are very glad to have uh, people from very specific industries today. And my next question is directed to Jessica, because I know that she works in a very, very particular industry, the space sector. So I would like to know what is the situation of the of women there, and if there is a, if it is like a more balanced sector, or if you can also see uh, the big differences in the rest of the STEM sectors. And if there's a difference, why do you think that is this difference in the field? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so just a, a little like um, background. So. So Lockheed Martin Wright's a really big organization. They have space, aeronautics, um, like helicopters, a lot of different things. And so when I used to work in the aeronautics section, 
um, that's where I really saw the big disparity in between like men and women. Um, so the group that I was in, I was the only woman, I was the only Hispanic. And so I really kind of felt out of place there. Um, and I didn't really see a lot of growth opportunity for myself, right, to get more leadership positions or to um, just really just grow in my career. And that's also kind of what motivated to kind of like move from that sector, move on to space, obviously, because that's what I wanted to do. Uh, but thankfully, I really, I'm really thankful that I've made the move because in the group that I'm in right now, um, I would, I would like, like, I'm proud to say it's almost 50-50 or like with men and women. And a lot of the women are in leadership positions, right? So we're also in an agile um, organization. So like the scrum master, well, the scrum master is, is a male, uh, but our lead is a woman. Um, the lead of the, of the group that we're in is also a woman. And so it's, it's really motivating to see that, right? Because it's, it's, it's showing me like what I'm capable of, right? Um, so I can only really speak about the group that I'm in. I also moved here during COVID. So I've been working from home. So just walking around the, the company and trying to see other groups. Unfortunately, I haven't had that opportunity, but just seeing the big difference from the group that I was in before and the group that I'm in now, um, just seeing um, all the opportunities um, that were open to me, um, I would like to say that um, it's, it's getting a lot better. So I, I find it really motivating um, and really encouraging to all the women and girls that are, are on this call right now that, you know, it's getting better like uh, Nazreen and, um, Every, everybody else mentioned, um, you know, it, it's getting better. Um, we're moving in the right direction. So, yeah, thank you. Yes, Jessica, uh, you're right about that. And every time we see more and more women in the leadership positions, that is totally true. And I am really glad that you mentioned uh, about the Scrum Master, because my next question is for the Scrum Master that we have with us today, and that is Gosha. For that, I would like to ask you, Gosha, a Scrum Master is some sort of kind of leadership facilitator position. So how do you see it uh, from your place? Like, are there more women in that industry or is it more balanced or why is the situation like that? Well, to be honest, um, it's it's very hard to say because from my experience, um, from, from the very beginning, whenever I I join a company, there would be like three women and 30 men. Uh, and this was a standard. And mostly women were the women that were working in the software houses or startups that I was joining. They would work in administrative uh, positions or HR. And the ones in tech would be, there would be really um, only a few of us. So, um, but currently it is a bit changing and when it comes to working as Scrum Masters, um, I can see that there are more and more women. I think maybe uh, because Scrum Masters, it's um, soft skills are also very important. So I think, feel, think that women feel a bit more confident uh, in those kind of positions. Uh, however, I think that it is more balanced. Well, it is balanced, more balanced uh, for now. So, uh, however, I can still see that there are more men uh, in most companies of IT, like software houses. But I think that it's changing quite well. We have a lot of women that are starting their careers in IT uh, because of programs. And also a lot of companies are pushing for diversity and they are really trying to uh, make sure that they pay attention to the fact that um, they they hire women as well, not uh, not just because uh, we are women, but because of our qualifications, of course, but still. Uh, and I think the, the biggest problem actually that I still see um, in, in my field in IT is that women underestimate their skills on a daily basis. Uh, and until we do, uh, this, the situation will not change. So we have to work with confidence and we can we have to make sure that we take a seat at the table and i can see women doing that so i hope there will be more of us thank you very much for your answers i will i will say that they are something that encourages us and give us great examples and now i would like to move to another area that is about the challenges that women could have faced and let's start by Sabina. How do you ever face something about the glass ceiling? That is um, about the differences in the salaries or something that you have heard of it? Uh, 
I have to say glass ceiling is existing, right? I cannot say no. Because uh, as I progressed in my career from a small engineer to a coordinator, to a manager, to project manager, IT project manager or IT service manager, I found it at some point, I, I wouldn't say it's saturation point or nothing. At some point, there are some, you know, restriction that somebody or something not allowing to grow above that. You know, I realized that in my career already. So it even uh, made me to think to deviate uh, some, you know, point uh, to, to another sort of IT. Uh, so what I noticed, uh, it's not only in the salary. Salary, of course, yes, because um, especially in Qatar, if you are in husband sponsorship or visa, you will not have all the benefits that another uh, employee who is in the company visa is getting. It's not my mistake that I am under my husband's sponsorship, you know. <laughs> So I don't still understand why, because we are doing the same job in the same time, same, um, you know, so definitely I don't have, I don't know why, why it's happening, still existing. But to be honest, as um, what I learned, I learned from my life, uh, when you uh, see something which you don't like to see, just close your eyes, move forward, learn to move forward. You know, I don't like to hear or see, which I, I shouldn't be hearing, or, you know, I don't focus or waste time on it. Because I have so much to learn, so much to know, so much to uh, travel again. So for me, more than the payment, what I am getting, my learnings more important, my experiences more important. So I don't care because I know what I am and I don't know, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not saying I don't care, but I worth this than what I am getting as a money, monetary benefit. So we are definitely they will realize the value of that. What as far as I know, all the employers were high worked. They loved me. They never wanted me to leave. And the moment when they realized I'm going away from them, they had a pain in their heart. I realized it. So I really uh, value that. Really values me to boost my confidence to move forward in my career. Thank you, Ms. Reen. Maybe you can tell us if you ever felt any difference in the treatment that you received. For example, it, it, not exactly, let's say no discrimination, but any difference when you were working. If you, for example, if you have a male friend or a male, or a male colleague and you were the female, if there was any difference in how they treat you? Uh, well, actually, um, to be uh, fair, I didn't, uh, I didn't feel the a uh, big dif uh, discrimination uh, being uh, being a woman against uh, ma uh, male colleagues from the uh, way of treatment. Now, there are sometimes, uh, I believe, uh, subconscious, uh, unconscious biases, which uh, they tend to uh, st start first with the male colleague, asking them, seeking the opinion. So, as a woman, you have to prove yourself more. You have to work harder. You have to give more to prove yourself as a competent uh, engineer, as a competent person, because there is this conception or concept that things are more for uh, male, uh, especially being some, I mean, a computer engineer for girls, uh, they didn't, uh, some, some people didn't uh, feel that it was uh, a, a real domain or the right domain for me. But I didn't, uh, it was uh, in the way of treatment. However, if I want to be uh, on the level of, uh, as recruiters, as uh, the company that I've worked, I didn't uh, uh, suffer from the bias being a, a woman. However, maybe being a woman and being an introvert, so things make things harder because uh, you have to be, uh, to ask for your rights more. And uh, maybe if I was an extrovert and a woman, things would have been easier, but being both and in the technology domain makes things uh, cumulatively harder for me to get what I deserve. Um, so this is it. But in general, I didn't feel a big bias or a major uh, blockage because I was the woman or woman engineer. Thank you very much, Nisreen. And now, Kasia, maybe you can tell us if you ever felt any stereotypes in the in the technology sector. 
Yes, there you go. And yes, I heard many stereotypes and especially about uh, people working in computer science, of course. I'm sorry, Vino, did you ask a question? No, no, you can continue. Okay, okay. Uh, so, yes, of course, and there are also many uh, memes on the internet that show men in a quite bad position and women are, let's say, uh, the hygiene level of uh, us is a bit higher <laughs> when it comes to a stereotypical computer scientists. Um, and I also heard from many of my friends that it must have been terrible to work in a software um, engineering company and so on and so on. But personally, I I was very lucky to have a supporting um, family and also I participated in a few programs in Poland that helped me to realize that it is not like this, not at all. So for example, there is this uh, foundation called Perspectives and they are working on a scholarship program with Intel. And I was one of their mentees and uh, a fellow of the scholarship. So it was really eye opening and also all the mentoring programs that I participated in. They, yeah, they just gave me so much that, um, yeah, that I didn't feel the stereotypes anymore. But yes, there are many and you can hear them on a daily basis. It's true. I frequently see these kind of memes in Facebook and they it's actually very funny, but <laughs> it reflects part of our reality, you know. Now, a friendly reminder for everyone in our audience to write the questions for our panelists in the chat. We'll have the Q&A at the end of this meeting. I would like now to move to the recommendations, because I guess that from, we all can benefit from the experience of these ladies. So I would like to hear the recommendations, first of all, for other girls who would like to get involved in the STEM field. And second, recommendations for all of us who would like to grow in our professional careers in the technology fields. Uh, I will address my questions first to Jessica. Jessica, what can other girls do to, what will you recommend other girls to, that would like to get involved in the space sector? Yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful question. Um, there's definitely a lot of um, organizations or at least um, like learning opportunities. Um, so at least here, um, there's various organizations. There's, there's like SHEP and like SWE, so like Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers or like Society of Women Engineers. So thankfully, you know, with this boom of like, you know, um, motivating STEM and like, you know, boys as well to like study STEM careers. Um, these organizations um, that I'm thankfully a part of, you know, we go to like elementary schools and we go to high schools and kind of um, do, you know, hands on activities with them and like motivate them to like study these careers. Um, I'm not sure like, you know, elsewhere, I'm sorry, that's just what I know here. Uh, but like one thing that that definitely I can like say to like encourage all the, the people on the call is like be willing to like learn new things right be willing to ask questions ask the hard question um there is no dumb question right like be willing to put yourself out there if you don't know something you know definitely um ask ask for clarification any examples um and really just be motivated right that's that's really like what's going to get you far in any career right not just the space sector but just like i'm sure everybody here on the call can say you need to be motivated right you have to have a passion or um, something to look forward to and so um that's that's what i can say towards that thank you follow your dreams that's a recommendation and now um sabina you have been in the field for more than 10 years you have like quite a vast experience what can you recommend us to grow in our professional careers uh, in order to grow in professional career, especially in IT, uh, we need to continuously update ourselves. We need to know the current technology, especially now it's robotics, artificial intelligence, big data, data analysis, cryptography, and um, uh, hacking. These all fields uh, are on top, you know, even though the base is base always, uh, we have a lot of uh, new updated technologies. So in order to have progress in the career, 
uh, we should have an enthusiasm to learn and move forward instead of uh, continuously focusing on the result, enjoy the journey sometime, you know, and sometime you might not get a quick result. Right? So never give up. Don't lose your enthusiasm or, you know, interest in the field because there is always something you will find uh, uh, interesting to you. You will really find a lot of something to be able to locate yourself uh, because I, I, I realized when I, work, I was working in, um, in an American firm, I got a wonderful opportunity to work with the robotics team uh, in, in part of uh, College of North Atlantic Qatar here, a Canadian community school. It, I thoroughly enjoyed it because a lot of the concepts are similar to the computer science, the software part and hardware and networking concepts with the machine, how to program the machine to do different things. It, uh, it enhanced my knowledge and uh, my confidence actually. So love your job. Uh, so have a, a passion to learn and move forward. Uh, don't think yourself less compared to anybody in the world. Uh, see yourself equally to everyone, everyone. The moment when you start thinking yourself less, the other one definitely will think yourself less, you know. And uh, don't consider that the, the next person, the colleague is a man, male, I can't talk to him. No, we all are human beings. There is no gender existing in the world at all, actually, for me. So ask questions, move forward. Uh, know and excel and help others to uh, encourage others. That's my advice. Thank you. Thank you very much for those amazing ideas. And now I would like to move to another area that is about to see in the future. And is what areas do you think women are going to get more involved in the next decade? Because, hey, the, trans the COVID broke huge changes to everything, not only to men, to, wo to women, and to everything that we ever imagined. So the next 10 years are completely different. And I would like to start with Ms. Rin, what are her thoughts? Uh, well, I believe, uh, as you mentioned, the world is moving, is changing fast and uh, COVID has uh, changed a lot, uh, how we used to live. Actually, there's a joke, uh, which we, I believe many of us have seen it, that. Uh, COVID was the main reason for digital transformation of uh, uh, organizations. It's not the, this, this decision, it was due to COVID. Uh, so I believe uh, that uh, what COVID has introduced is the remote working, uh, uh, remote working or hybrid working maybe. I'm not sure what's coming next, but, but for now, so for sure the dependence on technology has increased way uh, more uh, due to COVID. Uh, the technology is uh, is moving very fast. So now we're uh, going into AI, deep fakes. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, things that that, I, that we. Uh, it's very hard to just follow up on what's going on. So I believe this would bring. Uh, if I want to tie it to our panel today, that was this will bring a lot of opportunities for women because uh, women had suffered from maybe the mobility. Uh, they usually men had more time after work uh, to meet uh, and to promote their business. Uh, uh, so now women and men almost have the same opportunity. I know some pressure added to women due to people uh, or the family staying home maybe, but I believe there are several opportunities that were given to women uh, due to COVID. Uh, so I, hope and I believe that we will see more women invading the technology domain benefiting from uh, what COVID has provided the remote access the reachability uh, the word reachability that all women now can have they don't have to travel and leave the family they can get the mentors they can uh, get the technology the training that they need from their home so I'm hopeful uh, that the future whatever the technology is going uh, all the changes, more opportunities for us women is coming. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Rin. And now, Gosha. Right, so uh, I definitely think that um, in the next couple of years, we will have uh, much uh, 
many more uh, women in tech, at, at least in Poland, because we have tons of um, programs, mentoring programs. We have tons of uh, um, happenings uh, for women to, to make sure to ease up their journey into tech and to make sure that they have all the support they needed. Uh, and it is all it is targeted mostly to women that are studying or young girls, uh, for example, finishing high school. So I think that in the next couple of years, we will see all those girls and, and young women joining uh, tech as uh, coders. They will become developers. I can also see a lot of uh, programs in product design. Uh, so I think those two will definitely see a lot of, a lot of young women. Uh, and what I also see is that um, girls are, mm, they are opening up, we are opening up. So we are becoming, we are accepting that we are all equal, that, uh, that there is no difference and we can have all the competences of the world and all the skills and abilities. And it pays because we can see that there are more of us and there will be more of us. So, so that's what I think. I just, uh, I believe that we need to uh, do the work still and keep doing it. The work that we are doing, for example, today here in the Women in Tech panel and, and everything else. And just um, don't give up and we will see the results in the next couple of years. Perfect. And the last question of our panel has come. And as we normally do in Cyber Prophets, we are trying to prophesize what will happen in the future, right? In order to be prepared for it. We already spoke a little bit about how the situation with COVID uh, has changed the current situation in the world. And now I would like to go a bit further in the future and speak about the next decade. So my question sounds, what is your prediction for women in technology in the next decade? How will you see it in the next 10 years? Kasha, what, will you, what do you say about it? Hello, Edgar. Hmm. That's a very tough question because I see that sustainability is a huge trend currently. And for sure, in the next decade, it will still be on the top. So I have this feeling about robotics and computer vision that would be complementary with sustainability. A lot of my friends, a lot of my female friends, they are very hyped about it. And I, I have this feeling that this will be um, a very big thing in the next decade. However, of course, also when it comes to software engineering itself, it gives so many opportunities. And right now when we all have more, home, more time at home and yeah, well, it won't last hopefully too long but the girls are taking more courses online so i feel that um, that also when it comes to writing applications for something and um, this field can be really taken over by women but yes as i mentioned i have a good feeling about robotics amazing katarina so your thoughts are on sustainability and robotics and now, I would like to ask the same question. What is your prediction for women in technology to Sabina, our division director? Thank you, Edgar, for that question. Uh, in the next decade, I'm sure, you know, the delivery style will be changed because as we see everything, every service in the world is delivered in a different style. Education is being served in a different way. Medicine or health services in a different way. Food is served in a different way. Everything different delivery style. So I'm pretty sure the softwares and the developers or tech people have more chances in the next decade. With uh, you will also see more girls coming to this field because you will you will see the gender is not visible. Such a change you will see so slowly because. All of us are working from home, right? Working from home, uh, the, the man or the boy in the home is making coffee for us. So it's, you, you will feel it in a real time. So you will not see that barrier no more. Gradually it will disappear. So you will feel it's a blended, you know, you will see only you no know, gender. So what, that's what my opinion, okay? And you will see more uh, automated systems automated system and as we all are familiar with the diets healthy food you will see healthy 
software, healthy IT, cyber security has more importance because a child with three years is glued to in front of the screen uh, for the KG classes. So how to protect my baby from these hackers and these people? That is more relevant in the coming decades than learning something. So healthy IT or whatever you call for that field, that will come soon. Before you teach them something, you should teach them cybersecurity and importance of saving them from this uh, dangers. That will be more prominent. And definitely I can see uh, automation and uh, artificial intelligence integrated with robotics, uh, more um, uh, healthy uh, technology. So this uh, uh, discussion in women in technology, this tech panel is really uh, an opener, eye opener for all of us to think for the next decade means we are visualizing now itself. Thank you, Edgar, for that, helping us to visualize it. Thanks, Avina. It's a very interesting topic you have introduced here, healthy IT. It's very important for everyone nowadays, I have to say. And the last prediction about women in technology for the next decade will be for Jessica. How do you see it in your field? Yeah, I think uh, Kasha and Sabina um, really touched on, on a lot of those uh, points where, um, like I mentioned, like what I'm experiencing here with, you know, women getting more leadership position, women um, having that voice that we've been longing for so much, right? And so I, I really see it going in that direction. Um, I really see it in um, allowing more opportunities for women to um, really have that voice. And so I, I really don't have much to say. I think Savina and Kasha really touched on, on a lot of those, those points there. Thank Perfect. You. And to summarize all of the prediction, we have heard that sustainability and robotics will play a major role. Healthy IT and education will be very important. We'll also become, uh, we'll also have like genderless, genderless roles and last, more and more women are going to have leadership positions. That's it for the panel discussion. And we'll now enter to the questions and answers section. And I can only see one question so far. So if you have any other question, please write it down. And the question, it sounds like this. How to build your confidence without checking your notes while speaking? So this sounds like a very like a leadership position kind of question and someone that might be facilitating. So I think that Gosha can be a suitable person to answer this question. One more time, how to build your confidence without checking your notes while speaking. Okay. Uh, I'm not really sure I understand the question. Uh, is, the, is the author of the question uh, here? Can you please elaborate? Yes, I can see Javed Ahmad was the author of the question. Javed, can, could you please elaborate? Yeah, hello, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, actually, my question is that uh, we don't have that much confidence or stock of words. Once we speak, sometimes we forget. If we are referring the paper, it's not matching what we are speaking actually. So having, having the confidence during the speaking, so it's a mismatch and it's go in different way actually. I want to know how we can speak without referring any notes actually. That is the my question actually. And maintain the confidence as well. Okay, thank you so much for your clarification. Uh, it's a very good question I, I think because um, confidence is a very, well, I would say trendy topic now, and especially when it comes to women in tech. And I think that building is mostly about, first of all, accepting yourself and making sure that you know your worth. And when it comes to uh, checking your notes and just making sure that you speak up, uh, I think that, that the most important thing is that 
you have to know what you are talking about. So always make sure that your opinion is based on things that you know or things that you feel. It doesn't have to be pure knowledge, but it can be emotions, feelings, or basically your personal experiences, but always make sure that you know what you are talking about. And the confidence will come because when we are, when we are sure of what is there, we want to convey to, to the audience, whether it's at a meeting uh, with the, the board of the company or it's a personal meeting or a woman in tech panel, I think that it all comes down to being sure that you know what you want to pass to the audience and making sure that you also uh, spice it up a bit with your personal experiences because we can never mm, miss um, understand or we can never forget our own experiences so this is something that we will never forget during a speech i hope that this answers a bit your question <laughs> Javed. thank you Gosla. it's a very much uh, i understand it's a very true and i'm happy with your answer thank you so much Thank you very much, Javed. Uh, Diana, if you want, you can unmute yourself and ask your question to Jessica. Maybe it will be easier for you, so feel free to do it. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with Vicky, yes. She's probably just asking us to visit her club. That's a shout out to masters. Thank you very much, Diana. We'll make sure to take a look at this Toastmasters club. Thank you very much. And now, uh, is there anyone else here who has a question? Anyone? I can see no, no one raising their hand and no more questions in the chat. So that means that we can conclude our panel discussion for tonight. I would like to thank and give like very special and warm thanks to our 100 participants, our division director, Sabina, Gosha, Jessica, Kasha, and Nisreen. Thank you very much for participating with us today, for having the courage to enter in a male dominated field and now for having the courage to speak in the name of all women and to represent them. We'll surely learn a lot from you today. Thank you very much. I would also like to thank the Division E and Athena International Toastmasters for sponsoring this event and making it possible. And very, very special thanks go to Vicky Ferrer who has helped us a lot with the organization. Thank you very much, Vicky. And just as we mentioned, or as Sabina mentioned during the answer for Javed Ahmad, you can join Toastmasters International in order to improve your communication skills. Most of us here are members of Toastmasters International and you can continue with it and surely you will develop your communication skills. Last we would like to invite you with Federico to subscribe to our podcast channel where we are discussing more topics related to technology and interviewing experts in every field of technology. Follow us on YouTube under Cyber Profits. I would like to thank also to our audience, the ones that made it possible, uh, for made it here today, and especially to those that were in, that joined at midnight uh, we have audience from all over the world, so thank you very much. This has an event in collaboration with Athena International Toastmasters, and see you until the next episode.